Welcome back everyone. In this video we're going to be talking about machine learning models. Now make sure you've watched the previous two videos in the series because they're going to set the foundation for understanding why we use machine learning and how it's useful. One of the big terms you're going to hear when you're studying machine learning is model. And the goal of this video is to have a full understanding of what a model is. The previous video mentioned historical data, specifically what we called a data set. And this is essentially a crap ton of data that sort of represents reality. The more data, the more close to reality we are. You can think of this data set as modeling reality. So a model is just <laughs> a representation of reality. But sometimes a data set is not enough because we can't just look at a data set and know what's going to happen or what people are interested in or who's going to have diabetes. We're not capable of looking at terabytes of data and making those kind of decisions. <laughs> so we need something more. For a moment, let's look at this data set and consider it a representation of reality. Now let's split that data set into a bunch of sections. So each one of these sections can represent a piece of reality. Now, I want you to think of just doing that as many times as you can. So we're gonna basically find the limit of splitting this data. <laughs> we're going to split that as many times until we have individual <laughs> representations of reality. Okay, now I'm gonna try to not be so fluffy with this and be a little bit more concrete. Let's talk about diabetes. And let's say we're trying to predict diabetes. How do we know if someone is likely to have diabetes in their lifetime? Well, this data set is going to contain a lot of information about people, their health history. So we're gonna have a ton of information. And if we continue to split this data to where we get down to like the individual cells of data, we're talking about one particular instance of what we're trying to predict, whether or not someone has diabetes. So one element in this historical data could be a person. We have this happy person in this data set and we have all their information. This person might be a male, they might be under the age of 50, and they might have a family history of diabetes. So this is one representation of reality. We might grab another instance of data over here. Let's say this one's a lady. This person, female, she might be over 50 and no history of diabetes in, in her family. And as you continue to do this, you can think of all of the different possibilities of data inside of this data set. You could have the same exact person who is under 50, has a history of family diabetes, but is a female. Then you could have the same exact person who's a male, who's greater than 50, and has no history of diabetes. Just think of all of the different possibilities of data. And then we're going to represent that data in a table. These are the columns of our table, and we're going to try to represent reality here. Now, <laughs> I'm just gonna warn you guys, this is like super, super simplified. And that's one of the downsides of teaching this, is it's really hard to represent reality when you only have a chalkboard. <laughs> you more likely would need an entire data set. So this is like getting rid of a bunch of important data and really simplifying it to binary yes or no, male or female. And that's going to make it a lot more easy to understand. So we could have male, less than 50, yes. History of diabetes in the family, yes. We could have male, less than 50, yes. History, no. Male, no. Yes, and you just go through the process of getting every single combination. So if we can find people who have these attributes and know whether or not they had diabetes, then we're able to model reality. 
This means we're going to need one extra column here, and that is whether they had diabetes. This is why historical data is important because we need to know if the person ended up getting diabetes in their lifetime. We can just make data up. All right, so we have a perfect representation of reality. Now, you can think about this as traversing a bunch of if statements. So let me just make a little line here. If you look at the first entry here of male, yes, yes, and no, you could represent that in an if statement like so. If sex is male and age is less than 50, true, and history, true, then diabetes equals false. And you could just go one step farther and say, else if sex equals male, age less than 50, history, I guess it'd be exclamation history to invert it, or you could say history equals false, whatever, it doesn't really matter, I'm not gonna get into programming concepts much right now. The point is, you can go through and model reality using a simple if statement. And you would say that it is complete because in our simple world, we could know every single person whether or not they're going to have diabetes using this historical data. So someone comes into your office and they're a female, they are less than 50, and they have a family history of diabetes, you can know before doing any kind of test, you can know that they are going to have diabetes. <laughs> this is fine for data analytics. We could do something like this, of course, but the predictive part comes in when we do not have a complete representation of reality. The machine learning aspect of predictive data analytics is going to find the best model even though we don't have data for the entire representation of reality. So for example, if we got rid of these two rows, now we only have a 80% representation of reality. So the machine learning algorithm is going to try to predict if someone came in as a female, they were not less than 50, and they did have a family history, what are they going to have for diabetes? That is what machine learning is going to do. And the choice that it makes here, the choice that it makes here is the model. Once, once it makes all of the choices for all of the possibilities where we do not have enough data in our data set, it makes all those choices and has values here that is what we call our model. <laughs> I probably just made it 4,000 times more complicated and could have just said, hey, it's just a representation of reality based on some traversal of if statements or something way simpler. But this is pretty good. But why is this that crazy? Well, think about it when it comes to possibilities. Let's draw that out for just a second. I'm gonna erase this if statement so I can have some room. We can approach this by asking a simple question. How many models are there available to choose from? Because there's only so many representations of reality in our data set. Well, in this situation, there's going to be four. So there's four models, and I'm going to write out all of the possibilities. If it wasn't for machine learning, we would have to choose which model was most appropriate but because we have machine learning, the algorithm can choose which model is most appropriate. So what we do is we take a look at the two entries where we do not have data for, and we write those out. So it's a female, and they're not less than 50, and they do have a family history. Because these are binary or Boolean attributes, you could represent them as true and false just as easily. They're, what I mean by that is there's only two options, female or male, yes or no, and yes or no. So this is one combination, and the output could be yes. And then we grab the other one, F, N, N, and the output could be yes. Or we could have the first row be yes, and the second row be no. Or we could have the first row be yes, the second row be no. I'm running out of space here, so I'm gonna do it over here. So here are all the possibilities. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 
two, three, and four. Which one is the most likely to be the good representation of reality? That is going to require a lot of extra effort, and that's why we leave it up to the machine learning algorithm. But just make sure that you take a second to understand why there's four. There's four because we don't have to worry about any of these rows. We already have the data for those. So we, we just disregard those and we just look at the rows we don't have data for. There's two rows, each with two possible values. So we could have where they're both yes, they're both no, one's yes, one's no, and then another one where one's yes and one's no, but they're flipped. So that represents all possible models of our data. <laughs> Whew, that was a lot. So when we write machine learning algorithms, they are going to pick the most likely situation based on other data. And those are the insights that I'm talking about that we're not able to see as easily as a computer. <laughs> That's all I got for this video. It was, it was quite the uh, long one, so sorry about that, but hopefully that was helpful. And I wasn't trying to overcomplicate it. All I am is trying to get you guys a better understanding of what a model really is. It is the most likely representation of reality when we do not have enough data to represent reality entirely. <laughs> so thank you guys for watching. Please be sure to subscribe and I will see you in the next video. Peace.